For the majority of my life, I've struggled with discipline. Since I was a kid, I would procrastinate literally everything. I'd always avoid doing the difficult things until I absolutely had to. When I turned 18, life got a lot harder. College was harder, being consistent at the gym was harder. Shoot, life was harder. I knew if I didn't figure it out fast, I was just gonna procrastinate getting my life together. And I think we all know that you don't have all the time in the world. Not only that, but the longer that you do this unwanted behavior, this bad habit, the harder it's gonna be to break. For the most part, we know we need to do something about it, but for some reason, knowing what we need to do and telling ourselves that over and over and over again is not working. That's why we need to trick our brain into doing the hard things. Now, in a perfect world, we have a goal, a dream, and from the moment that we wake up to the moment we go to bed, everything that we do is dedicated to achieving that goal. But that's not what happens. I'm a fitness coach, so I'm gonna use a fitness example, but whenever I get a brand new client, the, the very first thing I do is I look at what they're doing already and I cut out the bullshit, the BS, right? Anything that's not helping them achieve their goals whatsoever, not just their fitness goals, the things that are literally just BS, they're pointless. They're not helping you achieve any of the goals that you're trying to accomplish. When they're first starting, that's when their motivation is highest. So that's when I take advantage and do a challenge, a one week challenge where I have them follow a specific food plan that looks like this, just for a week. We stick to this food plan, and for the most part, people are willing to challenge themselves for seven days. When it comes to cutting out all those bad habits, a lot of people think that they have to sacrifice all these things to achieve what they want. But the purpose of this challenge is once you start doing it, you start realizing a couple things. And one of the biggest ones is you see how much food has control over you, right? You don't have control of the food, food has control over you. You start realizing what you're actually sacrificing. So when you think you're sacrificing your desserts, your sweet stuff, all this BS food that you think you like, you actually realize that you're sacrificing feeling good, having energy, all these things that are gonna do so much more for your life than the BS. Now you don't have to do it with just fitness, you can do it with literally anything. Maybe it's challenging yourself to only have two hours of screen time per day. Or maybe it's no video games for a week. Or maybe you like to escape your stress with some movies or some shows, or maybe you picked up smoking or you like to drink because it helps you kind of like wind down for the day. Challenge yourself for 14 days or a week if you feel like it's a little too tough. That way you can see what I'm talking about. Now, a funny thing starts happening when you start doing this challenge is now you have more time. Those gaps you used to fill with the BS are now available, right? So you start getting bored. And that's why it's not just about cutting out the BS. You have to actually replace those bad habits with good ones. Because if you don't do that, you're just gonna revert back to the old ones. Now, after my clients do this challenge, we usually go into a fairly healthy balance of 80% whole foods and then 20% a little bit more flexible foods. That way they don't have to cut out everything completely. Same thing with people's screen time. Once they realize they're super addicted to their phone, it doesn't mean they have to just throw away their phone, right? Because they're probably still gonna use it. But maybe limit ourselves on how much screen time we're actually getting a day. It kind of wakes you up and makes you realize, you know, I gotta tone these things down a little bit. Now, I replaced a lot of bad habits with good habits, like for example, um, during the COVID times, I remember I was playing so much video games and after a while, I challenged myself, yo, I'm gonna quit. I told my friend, I was like, I'm gonna stop for two months straight just to see, just to make sure I'm still in control of this video game thing. And during that time, I started working out, I started like, I started a business, I replaced that habit with old ones and by the time two months was over, I didn't really feel the need to play anymore. We would play maybe like once a month for one weekend, then I would stop. And then now like over time we would play here and there and I don't even play that video game at all. Okay, so you cut out the bad habits and you replace it with good ones. A lot of us have already done this before. How do you get it to actually stick? How do you get yourself to actually do it for more than a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, two months? We want to want to do hard things, right? We want to want to do the hard work. Most people I know don't want to work out, but they want to want to work out. Does that make sense? And this is where self-awareness comes in, right? I'll give you guys an example. Now this is, um, this is my vision board. It doesn't just have my goals on there. It has my why, right? Why do I want to achieve those goals in the first place? And the why isn't something as simple as like, oh, it'd be nice, right? It's something very deep that's very important to me. That's why I have a lot of pictures that remind me, right? You'll see here, you see my family, you see my parents, you see all this stuff. And all this stuff really means something very powerful to me. And I have this everywhere. I put it somewhere where I have to see it. And the reason I put it everywhere is because anytime I'm feeling like slacking or I feel like just chilling for 
I end up looking at my vision board, which is, again, it's everywhere. I can't miss it. And it snaps me back into that non-negotiable state where I'm like, hey, hey, this is very important to you. Now is not the time to negotiate. You put this up here for a reason. Before I end this video, I wanted to leave you guys with one last tip that helped me out. This is when I was younger. Believe me, I had such an issue with procrastination that I would like research so much. I spent more time researching about procrastination than actually doing the stuff that I should be doing. Um, but the one thing that really helped me out the most is don't call yourself a procrastinator. Don't tell it to your friends. Don't tell it to anybody. Because if you do, you're already like setting yourself up for failure. You're not a procrastinator. You just have a habit of procrastinating. Anyways, guys, that's it. That's all. Have the best day of your entire life. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.